Stop scrolling and look at your legs right now. Are they swollen? Do they feel heavy, like lead weights are strapped to your ankles? Maybe you feel that cold numbness creeping into your toes, or worse, that sharp burning pain when you try to walk more than a block. You have been told that this is just part of aging. You have been told to just elevate your feet and live with it. That is a lie. What you are experiencing is not normal aging. It is a plumbing problem. Your arteries are stiffening, clogging, and starving your lower limbs of oxygen. Most of you are trying to fix this by walking more, but your legs hurt too much to walk. Or you are taking calcium supplements because you are afraid of breaking a hip, not realizing that the very calcium you are swallowing is ending up in your arteries, turning them into stone rather than in your bones where it belongs. This is called the calcium paradox, and if you do not understand it, you are actively calcifying your own blood vessels with every pill you take. I am not here to baby you. I am here to save your independence. Today, I am giving you the exact list of the top five micronutrients you need to strip that calcium out of your arteries, restore the elasticity of your vessel walls, and get blood blasting down to your toes again. But listen strictly. You cannot just pick and choose. This is a biochemical chain. If you skip number one, the others will fail. If you ignore the safety warnings I give you, you could end up in the hospital. We are counting down from number five to the single most important nutrient that 90% of you are missing. Let's begin with number five. This nutrient is your primary defense against the damage you are doing to yourself right now by sitting down. You are likely sitting as you listen to this. And you might think sitting is harmless. You are wrong. Research shows that just three hours of uninterrupted sitting causes a significant decline in endothelial function. That is the inner lining of your blood vessels. When you sit, blood flow slows down. The sheer stress, the friction of blood moving against the vessel wall, drops. When that drops, your arteries stop producing nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is the gas that keeps your vessels wide and flexible. Without it, they clamp down. This is where number five comes in. It is vitamin C. But not for the reason you think. I am not talking about fighting a cold. I am talking about rust. When blood flow slows down in your legs, oxidative stress builds up. Think of it as biological rust attacking your vessel walls. This oxidative stress destroys a tiny molecule called BH4. Without BH4, your nitric oxide factory shuts down and actually starts producing more free radicals. It is a vicious cycle. Your arteries get stiff and your circulation dies. A specific study showed that when people ingested vitamin C during those long periods of sitting, it prevented that decline in vascular function. It acted as a shield, recycling. That BH4 molecule and keeping the nitric oxide flowing, it stops the rust before it eats through the pipes. You need to be getting between 500 milligrams to 1 gram of vitamin C. Ideally, you get this from food, peppers, citrus, berries. But if you are supplementing to fix a deficit, you must be careful. Here is your safety break. If you have a history of kidney stones, specifically calcium oxalate stones, do not go taking megadoses of vitamin C. It can increase oxalate levels in urine. For you, stick to dietary sources and stay hydrated. For everyone else, this is your first line of defense against the damage of a sedentary life. But vitamin C is only protecting the lining. It does nothing if the blood flowing through those vessels is filled with toxic sludge. That brings us to number four. This is not a single vitamin, but a team that works as the cleanup crew for a specific toxin called homocysteine. Homocysteine is an amino acid that your body produces as a byproduct of metabolism. Think of it like the exhaust fumes from a car. If your body is working correctly, it quickly recycles these fumes into useful fuel. But if you are deficient in number four, that recycling process breaks. The exhaust fumes build up. This condition is called hyperhomocysteinemia. High homocysteine is like running highly corrosive industrial acid 
through your veins. It chews up the endothelium, that inner lining we just talked about. It triggers inflammation. It creates the perfect sticky surface for plaque to latch onto. It is a massive risk factor for peripheral artery disease. If your homocysteine is high, your legs are suffering. To fix this, you need the B-complex family. Specifically, you need folate, vitamin B9, vitamin B12, and vitamin B6. These three vitamins control the enzymes that break down that toxic sludge. Folate and B12 recycle homocysteine back into methionine. Vitamin B6 converts it into cysteine. They clear the exhaust fumes. However, you cannot just buy the cheapest B-complex at the grocery store. Most of those contain synthetic folic acid and cyanocobalamin, which many seniors have trouble processing, especially if you have the MTHFR gene mutation. You need to look for the bioavailable forms. You want methylfolate and methylcobalamin. These are the active forms that your body can use immediately to start scrubbing that sludge from your blood. But even with clean pipes, we have a bigger problem. Many of you are dealing with a specific type of damage caused by high blood sugar. Even if you are not a diagnosed diabetic, insulin resistance is destroying the tiny capillaries that feed your nerves. This is why your toes burn. This is why they feel numb. This brings us to number three. This is a specialized weapon. It is called benfotiamine. You have probably heard of vitamin B1 or thiamine. Thiamine is essential for nerve health, but regular water-soluble B1 has a hard time penetrating the fatty outer layer of your nerves. It just cannot get in where the damage is happening. Benfotiamine is a fat-soluble version of vitamin B1. Because it is fat-soluble, it can pass right through the cell membrane. It gets inside the cell and blocks the major pathways of hyperglycemic damage. It prevents the formation of ages, advanced glycation, end products. Think of ages as sugar-coated proteins that gum up the works and stiffen your tissues. If you have burning feet, tingling, or that walking on pins and needles sensation, benfotiamine is the nutrient you are likely missing. It helps repair the microvascular damage, the tiny little vessels that supply the nerves themselves. You are usually looking at 150 to 300 milligrams per day. But now we are moving into the danger zone. The next two vitamins are the heavyweights. They are the ones that control the structure of your arteries, but they are also the ones that can hurt you if you take them wrong. Number two is vitamin D3. You have been told to take vitamin D for your bones. And yes, it is the foreman of the construction site. It tells your gut to absorb calcium from your food. Without vitamin D, you could drink a gallon of milk and absorb almost none of it. You need it to create the proteins that build bone. However, vitamin D is a double-edged sword. If you take high doses of vitamin D, I am talking 5,000 or 10,000 IU, without the rest of the protocol I am about to give you, you are flooding your system with calcium. You're bringing all the construction materials to the job site, but you have no one to tell the workers where to put them. So, the calcium gets dumped in the easiest place possible. Your soft tissues, your arteries. This is how you get vascular calcification. You are trying to save your bones, but you are turning your leg arteries into porcelain pipes that can crack. You need vitamin D3 to keep your levels optimized, usually between 40 and 60 nanograms per milliliter on a blood test. For most seniors, that means a maintenance dose, but you must strictly adhere to the safety break regarding kidney function. If you have kidney disease or high blood calcium levels, hypercalcemia, vitamin D can be toxic. It can cause kidney failure. You do not play guessing games with your kidneys. If your labs are normal, D3 is essential, but it is completely useless and potentially dangerous without the next nutrient. Actually, before we get to number one, I have to stop you. There is a hidden player, a ghost nutrient that makes number two and number one work. If you do not have this, the pill you swallow does nothing. That hidden player is magnesium. Magnesium is the ignition key. Remember how I said vitamin D is the foreman? Well, 
Magnesium is the coffee that wakes the foreman up. Vitamin D enters your body in an inactive form. It has to be converted by your liver and kidneys to become active. That conversion process requires magnesium. If you are magnesium deficient, and nearly all seniors are because our soil is depleted, your vitamin D stays inactive. You can take all the D3 you want, but your levels will stay low and your calcium will stay unbalanced. Furthermore, magnesium relaxes the smooth muscle of the arteries. It physically opens the pipes to let blood flow. You need to be taking a chelated form like magnesium glycinate or torrid, not oxide, which is just a laxative. But here is the safety break for magnesium. If you have advanced kidney failure, your kidneys cannot filter out excess magnesium. It can build up and stop your heart. If you are on dialysis or have stage 3 or 4 kidney disease, you do not touch magnesium supplements without your nephrologist's written permission. For everyone else, this is non-negotiable. Now we arrive at number 1, the holy grail of vascular health, the one nutrient that solves the calcium paradox. Number 1 is vitamin K2, specifically in the form of MK7. Here is the mechanism and I want you to visualize this. Your body produces a protein called matrix GLA protein, or MGP. This protein is the most potent inhibitor of arterial calcification known to science. It is the street sweeper that travels through your arteries and scrapes the calcium off the walls. But here is the catch. When your body produces MGP, it is born inactive. It is asleep. It cannot do anything. Vitamin K2 is the activator. It adds a chemical tail to the MGP protein, a process called carboxylation, which turns the protein on. Once activated, MGP becomes like a magnet. It grabs onto that loose calcium in your bloodstream and physically carries it out of your arteries and forces it into your bones where it belongs. This is the synergy. Vitamin D3 brings the calcium in, magnesium activates the D3, and vitamin K2 directs the calcium to the bone and keeps it out of the artery. If you are deficient in K2 and you are taking vitamin D and calcium, you are accelerating your arterial hardening. You are creating the plaque that is stopping the blood from reaching your feet. You should be looking for vitamin K2 as MK7. This acts longer in the body than other forms. A typical therapeutic dose found in studies is around 180 to 360 micrograms. And because it is fat soluble, you must take it with a meal that contains fat, some olive oil, some avocado, or eggs. If you take it with black coffee and toast, you're flushing it down the toilet. But listen to me closely. This is the most critical safety break of this entire video. If you ignore this, you could die. Vitamin K is a clotting agent. That is its nature. If you are on a blood thinner like warfarin or Coumadin, these drugs work by blocking vitamin K. If you suddenly start taking a vitamin K supplement, you will neutralize your medication. You will cause a blood clot. You could have a stroke or a pulmonary embolism. If you are on warfarin, you do not touch vitamin K2 supplements unless your doctor is managing it and adjusting your medication dose daily. There are newer blood thinners that do not interact with vitamin K, but you must confirm with your cardiologist which one you are on. Do not guess. For those of you not on blood thinners, vitamin K2 is the single most effective tool you have to reverse the stiffening of your arteries and regain your circulation. It is the difference between walking freely and being confined to a chair. You have the protocol. You know that vitamin C protects the lining. The B-complex scrubs the sludge. Benfotiamine saves the nerves. And the D3-magnesium-K2 triad manages the calcium. You need MK7, the natural form of K2. It is the single most important thing you can do to ensure your blood can flow freely down to your toes. But listen strictly. All of these vitamins are completely useless if you wake up tomorrow and eat the morning heart attack meal. There is one specific healthy breakfast food that acts like microscopic razor blades to your arteries, slicing them open and 
inviting plaque to form immediately. You are likely eating it right now. You need to click this video right here to see the number one artery clogging food you must eliminate. Click it now and I will see you there.